Hello guys and welcome to another edition of Rage Against the Dice. Now outside the weather's horrible, it's raining, the family's actually asleep, but I really could not wait to get this filmed for you guys. So as you can see, we're a bit bare bones today. We've got none of those amazing production values that you normally used to. Um, of course, this is Armour Digital. Now Armour Digital was a Kickstarter that we actually first covered uh, around about a year ago or so. Um, maybe just a bit under. And I was super excited for it. As you can see, it's a skirmish war game of battling drone tanks. Now, I'm not massively a fan of tanks usually, um, but I am a really big fan of a computer game called Command and Conquer and those type of RTS games where you create a base and you produce vehicles and stuff like that. And this game kind of fits along with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go have a look at some of the models. We're going to have a look at all the contents of the box now. This box isn't just the contents, it's the Kickstarter, so it's got some extras inside there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to flip it across and have a look. And it's upside down. That's a perfect start there, Kev. So with regards to this, you get five dice, 74 cards, two tokens, rule book, and eight models. So as I said, some of the extra models in here aren't going to be from this starter set. That's absolutely fine. What we're also going to do, because as always, we've been doing the multi-parts now on our unboxing videos on big board games and things like that. We are going to work through each of the uh, scenarios in the rulebook. Um, I think there's scenarios in the rulebook. I've only very briefly glanced at it. That is something I will say. Unlike normal, where our unboxing, we're unboxing it for the first time. I have actually had a look at the rulebook in this. Um, even if just briefly, because like I said, I'm super excited for this and I can't wait. So let's bust this open and have a look anyway. So it's a smaller box than I'm used to, which is really cool. So it's the rule book itself. I'm going to put that on one side for now. Um, as you can see, there's a big sea of what I'm assuming is resin. It feels like resin. Anyway, we're going to have a look a second. So the contents, you get these cards. Um, and some of these cards are the Kickstarter exclusive cards. So you get all these different miniatures, which we are going to have a look at. Uh, let me just throw all these across to here. And we're going to look at those in a moment, as I said. Um, you get the dice. Now these are very chunky dice. Um, this is the first time I'm having a look at them. As you can see, I've been recently spraying Ultramarines, so I've got blue everywhere. Um, they're not terrible. Um, they're a bigger shape than I'm usually used to, but that's because I've got tiny little hobbit hands. Um, they're decently lightweight. Yeah, they roll better than expected for me because there's a six there. But I guess at the end of the day, they are just D6. And if I didn't like the D6 that come with it, I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more, and I'm guessing a lot of you guys do as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the boring stuff out of the way, and we're going to look at the tokens, um, see the quality of them, those kind of things. Um, so let's have a look at this here. So here you have the token sheets themselves. It comes as two separate token sheets. Um, and we will have very, very brief look through the rule book in this part to see uh, what these mean. But what we're going to do is we're going to pop one out. Uh, decent pop. Decent pop. It's not going to damage the card, is it? No, you've got a little bit of a tab on here, but it's probably me being overly cautious for the camera. Um, decent thickness. Uh, you, as I said, you guys know that this is a bugbear of mine. They are one-sided, which isn't something that particularly bothers me, but I know that there are a lot of people who get a bit wound up by that. Um, but they need to get a life. Um, so the tokens themselves are decent quality. Let's check out the cards. So this is definitely the main deck. Um, obviously with the others, I would have to work out which one's which. Let's have a look here though. Um, now, I will just stress as well, if you are wanting to get this game, uh, it is now available to purchase from their online store, and I will have the link in the description, as I always do. Now, the cards themselves are a bit flimsy, um, but it's not a big deal, to be honest. Um, they're about standard now these days, I guess. I'm just used to sort of older Magic the Gathering cards, where 
they were just a bit better quality but new magic cards are as similar so as you can see here this is um one of the cards that shows the vehicle itself in fact no this is not i am lying to you let me just grab the section in the rule book this is um a production spec card so as you can see on this it's actually the same one that it shows in the rule book so you've got the name of said vehicle there which in this case is the tank it tells you the type which is just there it tells you the production points and the resource points in which to create it and then it shows you a little picture on there so you can match it up which is pretty cool um you got a couple of different ones there there's the rhino there's the elephant um so yeah side these two on the side and then what we have here are order cards so as you can see from the order card it has the title at the top it gives you the order text so in this case execute a move order the mobility of this unit is reduced to two unless it's already lower any point during the move execute a shoot order with a minus one modifier to firepower um, and then down there there's the restrictions which is in red so you know it's bad because unless you're an orc and red goes faster um red's never a good thing so restrictions not types for buildings and then the bit at the bottom is the card set of origin so i assume this is because yeah you can see that it says core so i'm assuming there's going to be expansions and things like that which is a really really cool concept um i like it when a game's a bit forward thinking um not so much to the point where they're already selling you new expansions before other ones have been released and things like that but i think they've done it pretty well so far as i said the kickstarter came with just the bare bones really you got the core set and then loads of extra units there wasn't like 20 expansions or anything like that thrown in um so these are obviously planned for a different date um, let's, let's have a look here what else we have so the next thing we have is the stats cards for the commanders i believe now the commanders um these actually represent your force commander themselves everything else is drones so here's one of the characters there and you see all the different stats that come with this character you've got your command your planning your surprise research logistics and resourcefulness you've got your traits down here so with this one which is jam in white you may reroll any two planning or surprise dice each turn decide how many rerolls will use after making each planning and surprise roll um down there it shows you the faction so this is none it shows you the unit types that the commander can construct so in this case it's tanks hovers and walkers let's see how that changes so that's also tanks hovers and walkers tanks ah yeah so here we go we have tanks hovers walkers and air units now on the thief um and of course you've got the different ones now these here these are the actual unit stack cards. So the extra cards that I've got there presumably are the stack cards for the Kickstarter stuff. But you've got the squirrel. And let's have a look at how that card set out. So you've got the... Across here, you've got all the different stats. Firepower, protection, com sensors, mobility. Top, you've got the actual name of it. Um, down here you've got how this skill works so this is a hardened skill radio passive tank and that's something when we actually do the rule book section we'll see what that is and then down at the bottom here and um, we have the traits so on this one it's got a transport of eight may load and hold up to eight resource tokens value down at the side here it tells you the unit type like this is a logistical type um other than that you've got your stats values down there so squirrel squirrel again wombat and one bat so uh yeah and <clears throat> hopefully there's some more otherwise that's not a lot of vehicles so yeah so here we have more cards and we seem to have more commanders and things like that uh, we will look at those as i said in more detail we'll do a section where we look at specifically the rules and we're going to look through some of the cards and things like that and then with the extra kickstarter stuff you got extra cards the extra the vampires are car, um, a tank i'm really really looking forward to using the wolf's another good one 
and then some March cards. So all these are going to go together. But oh, that's a point. As you can see here, we've shown before that the other one had core written on the bottom. Now this has one bat, so this is obviously a Kickstarter exclusive that came with the one bat. Um, but you can see there, so you're able to keep them separate. Um, which is something a lot of companies have been doing now, and I think it's a really, really good thing. I know for a fact that Mantic do it with the Walking Dead stuff, and I'm hoping that Hellboy is the same, which, for the record, I'm still pretty excited for. So, this is the rule book itself. It's a small size rule book, which is brilliant. I've always been a big fan of that since the days of Games Workshops. Um, the first one I got was Fantasy, and it was a smaller rule book. It means you can carry it around with you and things like that. Um, now, this is their first. This is the first rule book for this game. I'm sure it'll sell well and there'll be countless other variations. But as of this, it's not a terrible quality. It's not a super expensive quality. It's a good quality, though. Um, it's going to be annoying when we do it. I think I might actually dig out my PDF copy. Um, now, I don't think there's been an official PDF copy released yet, but there is the one, obviously, that they were sent out for playtesting, so I'll be able to match them up. It just means you'll be able to see it better, because I can screen capture it instead of this way, as you can see the light's hitting it. But in terms of the rules, it's all set out particularly well. Let's have a look at this here. So, you've got the acknowledgements on one side, and a special thanks to us Kickstarter fiends. And then, here you've got your table of contents. So yeah, I think what we're going to do now is we're not going to look at the rule book intensely in this one. Um, it's a good little rule book though. It's not too hard to master. What we're going to do now is we're going to go and have a look at some of the vehicles. Um, yeah, so let's get down. So the first thing we want to look at here is an extractor. Now this is a huge, huge chunk of resin, but it doesn't need a lot of cleaning up or anything like that. Of course it's resin, so I'm going to give it a bath before... I throw any paint on it or anything, but this is one of the main ways, from what I can see anyway, from the very brief glance at the rule book I had. This seems to be how you, you know, you win your games. And you can obviously, you can buy more of these. Well, I think they work out about sixteen pound each, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so these go in the table. So if we look at this here, this is a larger game. They go like that. So, um, or if you're playing a smaller game, as the demo setups. So there, so they go in there like that. Um, and it's really cool. So they are quite important. Um, and I believe one came with a starter set. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, you definitely can buy them for £16. Um, as I said, it's one big lump of resin. It's really solid there. Um, but yeah, I fully intend to get some more of these, of course. Now the next thing we're going to look at is Wombats now. I have three of these bad boys, um, and these are used for constructing and fixing vehicles, I believe. Again, as you know, this Kickstarter has only just arrived. I will be doing a bigger, more in-depth version of the rules, of course. And as I said, I do have three of them. So there's the other two. There's no need to look at all three, though. Um, as you can see here, these little armed bits just pop in what I assume is going to be there. There, they're a bit tight. But, of course, I'm going to glue them in anyway. You get the little ramp bit that fits on there. Now, I might pin that so it swivels up and down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at it in a bit more detail because you'd rather look at the model than my hairy arms. So, you have it again. A big, thick piece of resin. The underside, I don't really care about if it's got any damage or anything like that. Now, this back bit will need cleaning up, but that's not a problem. A little bit of filing will do that. Remember, and if you're using resin, wear a mask or something if you're doing filing, because resin's not really that good to breathe in. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to obviously throw them all together. It looks very, very simple. You just got the little arms there and you just glue them in. I'm going to pop these back in here for now, though. And we're going to have a look at the next model. Now all these models came in baggies, which is cool because it means that I've got some extra baggies for other things like tokens and such like that. So I can segregate all the tokens out. So here we have the next vehicle. 
And it's got a turret. And one of the really, really good things about this is, other than having to do a bit of cleaning up, I won't have to glue these turrets in. I can just pop them in normally. So that would normally sit in there, but of course it's got this big lump of flash, so I'll do is look at it separately. So that's got the detailing on these is really, really nice. Now, this has been made by WordForge, or um, WordForge games are definitely people on the box, of course. Um, and I have got stuff from them before, as you guys may have seen from when I was doing my Gaslands videos. They've got a game called Devil's Run, and I got some resin models from them, and they were also beautiful quality, but look at this. Now, at the moment, you'll understand I'm going to show the models, but I don't know the names of them all. Again, I know the names of a couple from, you know, overly infatuating over the Kickstarter, but I don't know all of them. So you will excuse the fact that I can't tell you the names of them all now. But what I will do is when we do a big in-depth look at the models, um, by that point, they'll be all cleaned up and assembled and things like that as well. I'll be able to tell you what they are and we'll actually look at the stat cards for them as well. So that should be quite fun for us. And these are a 15 millimeter scale. I've just realized this isn't something that I mentioned um, so far in what is now about 20 minutes into a, a product review. It's a 15 mil scale. And I have played other 15 mil games before, um, but I've never been a big one for it. I like either it's small games, six, eight mil, um, or I like 28, 32. Um, I don't like bigger. As in 40 mil stuff, 45, etc. I'm not a big fan of working with that. Um, but 15 mil seems okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, they just slot in. It means you've got the ability to move your turrets. Also means as well that you can have one chassis and hopefully be able to swap a couple of different turret heads out. Um, but yeah, you genuinely can't go wrong with the quality. It doesn't seem to need a lot of cleaning up as well, which is always a positive, especially when working with resin. Because resin's a bit of a nightmare. One thing I am a bit worried about is um, matching up the turrets and things like that to the gun. Uh, sorry, to the chassis. But it does seem to say in the rule book um, words. Yes, yeah, so it does say that um, obviously the pictures are on the cards. So I've got two more of these. Are these identical? Let's have a look. They are indeed. And is that the same as this one? It is. So I've got three of these. And that one's just broken. No, I just dropped it. It's fine. Um, and they're all one piece, actually. No turrets or anything like that to worry about. And we did just look at those previously, didn't we? And that was... Um, is that the squirrel? It is the squirrel. Um, and then you've got these two big bad boys. And again, it's exactly the same. Big chunky, and they get these little turrets. Now these turrets look like, yeah. So I don't know two separate turrets. One's like that, and one's hmm, interesting. I'll see how they differ. But that was the same as the model we looked at before, I think. Oh no, it isn't. It's got a very similar turret. <laughs> I'm kind of going in blind at the moment. And then we have what is essentially the biggest, meatiest chunk of these resin models. Now I'm trying to keep my noise down and sort of, so I don't wake up my family and really anger the better half. Um, so I'm a little more subdued than I would normally be because I've been waiting for this for quite some time. So here's the different chassis here's the different turrets so let's see how they pop together um, so there's some bits of resin and things like that here yeah i'm not going to be able to snap off a chunk that big that's big oh no it went in anyway that might not even be for that one as i said at this stage i don't think it hugely matters so this Clips in. So this is the only three-part model that I found so far, other than the one bats. And that's a pretty imposing gun. Yeah, I can see here there's a bit of bend. <laughs> um, I've been working very recently with some TT combat resin, so I'm quite used to having to straighten out half of the 
charts and things like that. So a little thing like this won't bother me in the slightest. But let's put these to one side. Um, that again. So like I'm saying, other than well, it really does not like the fifteen mil scale, does it? There you go. That works better yeah so other than some very very tiny little bits of cleaning up these actually look like they're in really decent condition um a couple of bends and stuff like that here and there but it's resin it'll straighten itself out um some hot water and a bit of goodwill um <laughs> and it should be good now yeah other than that little bit of resin there so in terms of it so far this is kind of all my Kickstarter stuff. I didn't go in for one of the bigger pledges, and that was purely just because I was backing a number of other Kickstarters at the same time. Um, this one came at kind of a weird point that I'd said no more Kickstarters, and then I was actually contacted directly through Twitter, I believe, um, from the guys who make this. And... Yeah, and then I ended up seeing Andy Chambers share it, and I thought, well, if Andy thinks it's okay, I'm definitely in. And I've been pretty much excited for it ever since. It's finally here. Next part of our video, as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the models themselves, fully assembled, and all the cards that go with it. Part three, we'll be looking at the rule book, and then we'll do some playthroughs. Um, there is a beginner's... It looked like, from what I could see, it was just one mission, but a beginner's mission. And then there's an advanced mission, so we'll be able to play through both of those. Um, hopefully, some of the guys um, from the group will want to play it, other than me. If not, I guess I'm playing it by myself. <laughs> um, but yes, as you can see, I've got a big chunk of resin here that's now going to go into a tub or a tub with some soapy washing up liquid. Uh, just to make sure there's no release agent on it. I'll then take a toothbrush to it and I'll get them all cleaned up, get them tidied, find the cards and things like that. And then we can look at them on part two in more detail. So what I'm going to say, guys, is definitely go across to the link down below to WordForge's website, where you'll be, sh will be, you, sorry, you'll be able to pick up your own copy of this if you so desire, which I hopefully you will. On top of that, if you've got Facebook, there is actually an Armour Digital group and there's an Armour Digital page. Definitely give one a subscribe and give the other a follow so you can, you know, post your painted stuff and things like that. Now, with these, I really don't know how I want to paint them, whether I want to go for something like digital camo um, or I want to go for, you know, some stark bright colours like a lot of the box art stuff. Um, as you can see here is all very very bright colors and i really like it especially like the reds and the blues and things like that um this specifically right here that is beautiful um i don't know whether i have the skill or the patience or the time to be doing that but i'm definitely going to do something with them um oh. So let me guys know what you think. Do you think I should go for a digital camo? Um, do you think I should paint it all just in two different colours? Or should I have each different tank a different colour? Would that make it a bit too confusing when I'm playing against people? Um, hopefully, as I said, some of the other guys in the our channel will really enjoy this game. and Pick up their own copies and then they'll have their own stuff painted how they desire as well. But anyway, yeah. So, and definitely check out this game. It's really, really good. Um, or it's really good on the surface. I obviously haven't played it yet. I've, well, that's not true. I've played a, a number of times um, during the Kickstarter. You could actually play it on Tabletop Simulator. Um, I don't know if the file's still up now, actually. Otherwise, I would share it direct like I did when we did the original um, Kickstarter video. But yeah, I would definitely advise checking out. In part two, we're going to look at the models in more detail. And the cards on them. And then in part three, we're going to look at the other cards and the rules itself. And then, as I said, we'll do a couple of videos showing you how to do how to play the game. Um, they probably won't be as in-depth as the ones the company have done. And you can actually check out their YouTube link, which will be down below for Armour Digital specifically. It's not a word forge one. Um, it's for specifically Armour Digital. And I'll put that in the bottom. Definitely go give them a subscribe. Watch their videos as they are really good and in-depth. Um, showing you how to play the game whilst also being passionate about it so it's not one of those really robotic boring ones um, yeah guys definitely can't wait to do more on this 
please give the video a like, of course. It helps the algorithms, definitely. Also feeds mine, Alan's ego, and hopefully the guys at Armour Digital and Wordforge. On top of that, of course, as I say, give it a share around just to let everyone know about it. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Create the dice gods and hope they smile upon you. And I look forward to sharing this with you in part two.